Okay, so welcome to the video. This video is very long as you can see. So in order to save time for you, I'm going to show you two different indexes. So this image right here, as you can see, it has all the sections of the video. So you can check all the timestamps to go to each section. And also you can go to uh, this part right here that says this. That's where I explain the sections of the video themselves. And next up, we have this spoils the video a bit. But yeah, this is a spreadsheet that I made. What we're interested in right now, on the left hand side, we have the levels and the strategies. We have the timestamps. So yeah, you can check any specific level or strategy that you want. I especially recommend you go watch level 21 because there's a huge discovery in that level. Yeah, with that out of the way, we can start the video. Okay, so welcome to the contents of the video. So. First off, we have, um, I'm going to do a timeline here. So first off, we have a main. So as the name suggests, this is the main section of the video. Um, so yeah, this is going to cover most of the strats. All you need to know is uh, going to be here for the most part. So what's going to be left out are the things that are too beginner or too advanced. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a second right now with the beginner. So beginner, there you go, and advanced. Uh, okay, so I'll put down some colors. Uh, so we have a speedrun Discord server, and we have some roles and uh, colors that you can get based on the time that you get in, in the speedrun. So I'm gonna list here which section of the video is important to watch depending on, on the colors as goals, I guess. So yeah, beginner, it's gonna be sub 220. I mean, actually, we'll cover um, a pretty wide range. You can get uh, a sub 2, you can get a sub 150. So, both sub 2 minutes and sub 150 are gonna be this color. Um, world record is gonna be the, this green. Uh, so, yeah, there's a wide difference between these two. <laughs> it's kinda sad, I guess. It's fine. So yeah, I'll explain like uh, what's gonna be in beginner. In beginner, I won't cover like uh, go into detail and cover levels one by one as I will do in main. But instead, what I'm gonna do is a demonstration. I'm gonna do a run that uses pretty much like no strats. I basically play the game the the intended way. All I just do is not die and complete the levels. And you you're gonna see how much margin per error I have to get is up to twenty. You can see how easy it is. Also, I'll include some general concepts uh, at the start because there are some things that you do need to know. So uh, everything's going to be there at the start. And so, yeah, that's what the beginner section is going to be. Actually, at the start of these two sections, there's going to be general concepts as well. Just know these three are general concepts. Now, at advanced, so yeah, there is not really a time goal here because what it's going to cover is pretty much the leftover strats, which what that means is everything that's too hard or saves too little time. Basically, all these strats that I think are not really worth going for, uh, then that's all that's going to be covered in here. Uh, I'll actually write it down. So we have only come here. Only come here once you can no longer save time anywhere else. Okay, so yeah, with these three, uh, all these strats are covered pretty much. But there is going to be more. So the rest of the sections, um, actually we have to include this, I guess, because technically this is a section. There it is. Okay. So next, what I'll do is I'll introduce you to one of my ultimate creations, which is a spreadsheet. So I'll talk more in detail once we get there. So what I did is I, I wrote down every strat and made a table displaying all the different time saves and difficulty of each strat. And let's uh, let's not forget, I will do world record analysis. I'll comment about like where I could have saved time. So also, I guess if you're interested in, in world record, you could be interested in my world record analysis. So I'll include some green there. I guess uh, this is everything, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let go of this and see the spreadsheet. Uh, bye. Okay, so this is the spreadsheet that I made. So let's quickly run over everything that's in here. So first off, we have the levels. 
So I did not include every level because the ones that I left out, there are levels that only have one way to beat them and you cannot save any more time than that. And they are straightforward and self-explanatory, so that's why I didn't include them here. If you're concerned about that because you're a beginner or something, then I would say you don't even have to worry about any of this. So yeah, you can just go straight up to the beginner section and you should be just fine. Okay, so moving on, we have these strategies. We have time save and difficulty. So as you can see, I used some colors just to show the order, like um, blue as the easiest and red as the hardest. Actually, deep red as the hardest. And same with time save. Blue would be the best time saves and red would be the worst ones. Actually, red would be going slower. Okay, so next we have these two. So what these two mean, which strats are included in each section of the video so say these two strats uh, they're lit here so that means they're in main but they are not in advanced and vice versa so say this strat it would be included in advanced here but it would not be included in main and so okay so one more thing as you can see there are some grayed out cells and they are all zero and they are also not explaining either main or advanced so the reason for that is they are only here for the sake of comparison. I used them as space to calculate and measure all the other time saves. So yeah, they do not require an explanation as they are very easy, as you can see. And, you know, the fact that they are just playing the game the intended way without, you know, using any tricks or optimizations or anything. There's a few exceptions though, there is uh, this strat that I do explain in this one as well. So those are the two exceptions. The reason I use them as base instead of these lower ones is because I thought it displays the times better. And yeah, some more important notes, if you do all these lower strats that are in this list, you get a time of a 202. And if you do all these strats that are gray, then you get a two minutes run. You can actually get sub two minutes with this. Uh, it's just really, really close. So yeah, if you've already gotten a sub 220 and are looking to get, you know, the next tier in the Discord server, the light blue color, then you can just do all the grayed out strats, add some others if you want to have a little bit more of margin and you should be able to get a sub two minutes. Okay, so yeah, now that I'm here and I have explained what all of this means, I'll just take the chance and take some time to recommend some strategies. So if you want to improve your run, I think the first thing you should look to learn are corner jumps and you can just do one of them if you want. So if that's the case, I recommend you do the first one instead of the second one. Even though the second one saves just a lot of time, that has its drawbacks because it takes you like 20 to 30 seconds, I don't remember, to get there. And it's kind of a reset heavy strat. So the first corner jump, on the other hand, only takes 8 seconds to get there. So yeah, you should be much more consistent if you do the first one. And you will get a lot more runs going if you do the first corner jump instead of the second, even though it saves less time. But yeah, that's up to you. And yeah, you should of course also do this uh, blue strut that I think is actually easier than corner jumps. I mean, I'm pretty sure it is. You would think it's insane because I do this strategy, but I found a way to make it much, much easier. So I recommend you watch that. And you know, that's like probably the best uh, time save difficulty ratio in this table. So yeah, I recommend you learn that. And yeah, if you want, uh, say, a sub-150, I think that needs uh, both corner jumps and then this strat over here and then, you know, the ball skip at level 21. And uh, I think that's all it really requires. The rest is just playing the best that you can. And so yeah, from there, it's just trying to get world record. So for that, I just have the world record analysis section. So I think there's nothing else that I can tell you about this. So, so yeah, I imagine there's a lot of ways that you could try and use this. I will include it in the description in case you want to copy it and modify it or whatever. Yeah, I hope this helps you and see you at other parts of the video, you know. Okay, so welcome to the beginner section. So first off, let's start with 
some general concepts. So, first thing you want to know is uh, this game has a jump buffer. So, what that means is you don't have to be exact with jumps. Uh, all you have to do is just press it within a reasonable time frame. And actually, it's still pretty generous, but the concept is you can press it before you land and you will jump just as soon as you land anyway so yeah the game just carries on and just sees that you're trying to jump and just does it for you so yeah you can be this late and the game will still detect you're trying to to jump like if you're this late it won't this is too much this is too much but this still works like it's very forgiving and yeah if you play knowing this uh, it makes it so much more comfortable and easy to play this is good to know because all the jumps that you do are basically frame perfect uh, without any effort required so yeah that's the first thing okay so the second thing that you need to know is uh, coyote jump so to do a coyote jump you only have to fall off a block and jump and as you can see it's so it's just that you can jump after falling off so yeah this is a common feature in platformers uh, basically to avoid a scenario that you just barely fall off the block and try to jump and you're unable to and that's you know frustrating so because of that we're given the ability to jump um, after we fall and in this game uh, the amount of time we have is kind of huge, I think. I mean, look at that. Like, we're way off the block, and we we can still jump. Fun fact, I think this is the cost of, like, pretty much all the box in this game, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, you need to, to know how to do this. It's pretty easy, so don't worry about that. You know, just fall, you don't have to exploit it to the maximum extent like uh, to a max range coyote jump that's not gonna be required at all but yeah there's some levels that it's uh, you need to use this otherwise it's uh, gonna be much harder and you're gonna lose time uh, but yeah it shouldn't be a big deal at all uh, so yeah that's pretty much all you need to know so let's go ahead I'll show you what you need to do to get this up to 20 Okay, so without further ado, let's let's start the round. So, I need to jump to start the round since I'm locked right now. So let's do that right now. So this next level, you have to go above like this. Here, you just jump at the right times. Here, you just wait for the ball and do a coyote jump like that. Here, you wait for this cycle. Wait here and then jump. Okay, so these next levels, pretty straightforward, nothing to really explain. Okay, so the level coming up, uh, I think the easiest way to do this is to wait here, not jump, then bounce here, and then just complete the level with that jump. Here, nothing to explain. Here you get the keys carefully. Okay, here you can choose to jump over here, but that's uh, not necessary. You can s save some time if you do it like that. Here the normal way to do this is like this, I, I guess. Here, this is the intended way. So you can just do it like that, even though it loses a second. But that won't matter, so... Yeah, just completing the levels the easiest way that's available. Okay. Oops. Okay, I missed that, but it won't matter. Okay, so here you need to get the key that's above first, then go to one that's below, like that. Okay, here you don't jump here. Otherwise, you lose time because uh, you stay on the air too much. Okay, here you just fall here and just go to strings. I think this way it's easier. 
He wait for the ball, then get the two keys, wait a bit, then jump again. He don't jump, then jump, and that's it. So as you can see, I got a 211, and it actually died uh, <laughs> to explain an alternative uh, strategy in one level and messed up a jump in another, so as you can see, there is uh, a lot of room for mistakes. And, um, the best run you can get with this route, I think is a 204. So, yeah, if you want to get some, if you want to get some dark blue color, it's as easy as that. So, I hope this was helpful to you, and yeah, see so you at the main section of the video. Okay, so welcome, this is the main section of the video. So let's quickly go over general concept. Pretty important one, we're talking about corner jumps here, so. It's basically uh, this, if I can show it. Yeah, that. So as you can see, I jumped in a place that, you know, I should be able to. And yeah, you can do this anywhere, in fact. Um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so the way this seems to work is like, you need to be crossing the corner of the block, like you can do it from here as well. It's just a different timing. It seems like, uh, like you keep falling, so you don't touch the ground, but I guess to the game, you still touch the ground because you're still so close to it. So that ends up triggering a coyote jump which is what makes you able to jump all the way down there, I think is the way that this works. But yeah, anyway, this trick, if you've seen this spreadsheet, I've talked about this, so it saves 2 and 4 seconds in level 4 and 10. So it's a pretty big deal. And so the way you do this is, uh, as I said, you can do it like sort of anywhere in the block as long as you cross the corner at the right timing, but you want to practice it in the middle of the block. The reason for that is in both levels that you use this, you spawn just right in the middle of the block. So if you practice this, then it'll be useful for just both levels. The muscle memory will just translate perfectly. So, so the way you do this is as soon as you're falling, you want to find a specific timing. And yeah, after you cross the corner, you want to jump again. So the way you find the timing is basically if you touch the ground, you did it too late. If you didn't, but you still couldn't get the jump like this, then you did it too early, so... There are no shortcuts for this, it's a matter of practice. And I guess it will be much harder to start, but you should be able to get more and more consistent with this. So yeah, I'll use myself as an example as I uh, played the game a lot. So I think uh, my consistency is getting it around a third of the time. Yeah, it's really hard to tell because I have good and bad streaks. But I think it's uh, a good estimation that I get it like a third of the time. It will be worse for you at this time, but as I said, you should be able to get consistent over time. And yeah, what else? So yeah, you want to also practice the timing of the second jump, because uh, if you jump too soon... So in both levels, this uh, will get in your way. If you jump too soon, you won't be able to complete the levels. So you want to practice doing the second jump really late, or like as late as you can. Something like this. Yeah, something like that. And yeah, you want to also practice doing it to the right. For level 4 you can go to the left and then to the right like that. And as I said, be careful not to jump too early, otherwise you will hit the wall like this and you won't be able to complete the level. So yeah, that's pretty much it about corner jumps. Okay, so there's one more thing I want to talk about. So I'm going to talk about string console, so basically it's uh, this, that right there, what I just did. Okay, so maybe it seemed like I did nothing, but if you pay close attention, what I just did is I did a coyote jump, which cancelled, uh, say, the string jump. So normally when you go into a string, you jump, but if you do a coyote jump, uh, you can cancel it so basically what you want to do is jump uh, right when you're going through the string and if you do it at the right timing then as you can see I jumped uh, I barely jumped there so it makes the jump smaller 
and the reason why that's useful is um, you know it lets you it lets you go into the next block earlier it reduces air time so yeah if it's a vertical level where you need to jump it, it will save time I think it saves around 0.2 seconds it probably depends on the level, but I'm not sure why. It's probably just that it's a difficult thing to measure because uh, I guess there are different levels of precision. But yeah, in any case, uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, there's only gonna be one level in this section that's gonna cover it. It's gonna be much more used in the advanced section, but I'll just uh, get it out of the way right now so that I do not have to explain it again. This is pretty much all you need to know about this. Okay, so now that I have explained corner jumps, let's see it in action. So yeah, this is the first level that I'm gonna teach, level 4. Also, brief disclaimer, um, since this is normal mode, after restarting, you're gonna see me invisible for a long time. But you know, speedrun does not look like this. Uh, in speedrun mode, the transition is shorter and you don't see your character invisible almost at all, you spawn immediately. You might see I'm shrinked and go back to normal. In speedrun, you do the animation as soon as the level starts. So yeah, just to clear any possible confusion. So yeah, the fastest way to do this level is with the corner jump. So as I have just explained, um, to do this level, you do, you know, that you go to the left and then jump to the right and you need to be careful not to jump too early otherwise you won't be able to complete the level like that so one thing you might want to know is uh, if you bonk your head early you should be able to save a tiny bit of extra time I don't know how much it might be something like 0.1 like that that should save time because it reduces air time compared to if you jump uh, much later Like that. Yeah, however, I do not recommend it because, um, you know, it really increases the risk of you not completing the level due to doing it too early. So I just recommend you play it safe and just try to jump late. And yeah, there is another way to complete this level that's slower, but it might be a little bit easier. This is a pretty old school strat, I guess. You can skip the ball like that. So it's pretty much about being able to jump as soon as you can on the first jump. Since every jump after is gonna be frame perfect anyway. If you do it soon enough, you should be able to jump over the ball. But yeah, as you can see, it's a bit easier. Uh, I think it's pretty hard anyway. So yeah, it's just like that. It's just the first jump. Uh, is the most important thing. Uh, position isn't that hard if you're like too close to the ball. In that case you can just uh, stop a bit like that. You see that I sort of uh, hesitated or held back uh, just to not hit the ball. But yeah I think because of its difficulty and the time it saves uh, I do not think it's worth uh, learning over corner jump because corner jumps, even though it's hard, it saves just so much more time that I think it's worth learning over this. So that's why I recommend, but yeah. Okay, so next level is gonna be level 7. So normally this level, you do it like this or like this. Both are the same time-wise. So yeah, there is a way to like skip, um, you know, colliding with these blocks. So yeah, these blocks slow you down, they get in your way. So going above like this and doing a spike jump over here saves you time, saves around 0.2 seconds. So yeah, that's basically it. So yeah, there's like two pixels that you can walk on, as you can see. I'm barely moving here. Like in my experience, it's uh, pretty easy. But yeah, it should at least not be too hard. The biggest difficulty here actually resides in the transition to the level. By the time you can uh, sort of see your capture, you're already almost uh, mid-air over here. So you need to react quickly. And yeah, that's the main issue of this level and 
and the thing that you should put the most attention to. So yeah, let me do a quick speed run <laughs> to just show you, because I can't really do that in normal mode. Because, I mean, in normal mode, uh, you're invisible. But yeah, it's not the same in speed run. So let me get there in a second. Okay, so it's this next level. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, like that. So yeah, you have to react quickly, but other than that, there's uh, not really anything to this level. So yeah, we can just go straight up to the next. Okay, so this is low line. So you would assume there's no time to save here because this is how you do the level and like there's nothing to it. But here's one of the places that you can do string cancel to save time. So as I explained in general concepts, uh, string cancels save time in a vertical setting, which this is, you need to get to this height so you can get to the rest of the level. So yeah, you can do a string console like, like this. It's recommend that you do not, the way I like to try this and also the reason why I put it in easy, although it's, I guess technically not that easy, is the fact that there is, uh, you can do it in a way that involves no risk. It makes it so that you get it sometimes and other times, you know, you just uh, complete the level normally and you just have to make sure you try to, you definitely do not do it uh, really soon, like do not try to be completely exact with it. Just try to play safe with it and do it late and like if you don't get it then you don't get it. But sometimes you will, so that that's the philosophy I have with it, I guess. And with that in mind, taking that, if you do it like that, there's not much risk involved. I mean, there's some times that I have uh, lost around due to doing this. <laughs> but I think that's been like two or three, no, it's maybe like three or four in like a thousand or two thousand attempts. So yeah. And I haven't got it successfully many, many more times. I do not know the exact number, but yeah, so many more times that I have failed it for sure. So yeah, that's all you need to do. You can do a string console here. Okay, so this is a level 10 now. A big level since this is the level of the second corner jump, which is the most time you can save in the entire game. So yeah, but before we get there, I'll teach this lower strats first quickly, so. First off, in beginner I showed this, which is doing the bare minimum. So yeah, that should lose uh, that should lose 0.4 seconds. So there's two ways you can do this. The way I used to do this uh, is harder. Yeah, yeah, let's jump into it. Let's start with the what I used to do. So I used to wait as little time as I could, like try to jump onto the strings as soon as possible. But it has to be a specific timing, I can jump straight away. I need to wait for the ball to go to the right a little bit, so I do that. Okay, let me try. And yeah, if I do it good enough, there you go. We go across without bouncing, and that saves time. So yeah, that should be 0.4 seconds faster. And there's a second way to do this, and it's actually, instead of uh, going behind the ball, you go in front of the ball so it look like this and then you don't have to do anything else you only have to wait there once you get to uh, the highest block right there here you do jump as soon as possible pretty much so it's much much easier and once you're here you have to wait because you get here too soon actually uh, in comparison so you have to wait and then you can jump now I hope I've gone over that uh, fast, since this is the real juice here. Um, so we're gonna do a corner jump. So there's a, a string here, so this might look weird. The game does not care if you've gone through a string. You can still do that extra jump that the corner jump allows you to. So like that, that's how it looks. So yeah, once you're through the string, you can go ahead and jump again. Just like a normal corner jump, uh, the only difference is that you go through a, you go through a string first. So yeah, that's pretty much all about this corner jump. All you have to worry about is not jumping too soon, as I've told you many times before, I'm assuming. Otherwise, this is what will happen. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, there you go. So there I did the jump, 
but I did it too soon. Let me see if I can do it again. Yeah, there you go. You see, I did the jump, but I did it too soon, so I didn't get the height that I needed. So yeah, one more thing. Um, you don't have to worry as level 4 uh, to do it too late. Yeah, here, if you do it a bit late or too late, does not make a difference as you could make it in low 4. In low 4 you could save a bit of extra time if you bumped your head early because you would have less air time. Here I think that does not happen because like the check for the door is not in the ground it's also in the air so you can touch it even if you're high in the air and it makes you stop moving and then fall, you fall to the ground and then you complete the level anyway. So let me see if I can show that to you. Uh, so there I got like exactly to the ground. Let me see if I could get like a prime example of what I'm looking for. Well, anyway, you can see what I was talking about. Um, the character is in the air, but then it stops moving and just falls to the ground. So yeah, that means the level is already completed and is already loading the next one or whatever. Yeah, I think that's a good example, I guess. So yeah, that's level 10. Okay, so this is level 14. So the route I showed in the intersection is like this. So the way to save time here, and it saves a lot of time, actually it saves um, 0.7 seconds is you go about like this and you get all the keys at once in one move pretty cool so yeah the way you do this is you wanna jump right about when you get to the corner of the block uh, yeah once you jump you press jump again to buffer it or spam jump and then you will jump as soon as uh, you're in the corner of this other block and you just keep going forward and you'll just jump off of it without touching the spikes so yeah, make sure to buffer it or, or otherwise you'll most likely just die like this to the spikes. Something like that. And yeah, the most important thing is just uh, doing this jump right here. And not doing a coyote jump because then you lose height and you won't be able to do it. So if you're too late, then you're gonna miss it. If you're too early, then you're gonna miss it. So yeah, you want to jump as much to the corner as you can manage without falling. So yeah, as much to the corner as possible, but just while being on the ground. And you also have to carry momentum, you can do it like being still like this. I mean, you sort of can if you're on the very edge, but you have to press right first, so the point remains. Also, it's important to mention when you go to the left on this first jump, uh, there's gonna be some variance, maybe sometimes you get far to the left and then you have to adjust and run to the right until you get to the corner. So it messes up the time with the timing. Yeah, it gives you a different timing. If you just get to the corner already, that's good in terms of time, but it makes it a, a little bit difficult. So yeah, when this happens you want to jump pretty much immediately. And yeah, here you have more time to like time the jump if you go far to the left. So yeah, I tend to try something like this, like getting around here, which is close to the corner, but enough time to be consistent and not mess up. So that's the way I like to do it. But yeah, sometimes I get farther to the left by accident. And yeah, paying attention to that is the most important thing. Yeah, there's more things that can go wrong but are easier to fix. So I'll, I'll just name them and you know this down to the spikes because you didn't buffer the jump. You can also hang in here by accident so you don't want that to happen you want to go farther to the right. And yeah you can also miss this key if you're too early. You can also die to the spikes there. So yeah I feel it's important to mention if you happen to land on these spikes like this then the level is not dead actually you do not lose any time because you have to wait for the door to spawn anyway so if that happens like this you can just run to the door like that and you'll be there in time no problem and yeah that's pretty much it about this level okay level 15 okay so this one the intended way is like this 
But yeah, that's uh, slow. We want to land on these pikes here and then continue the level. So, and yeah, it saves you around the second. So, yeah, the way you want to do that is uh, you run until you hug the wall and then tap right as briefly as you can. You have like one or two pixels that you can land on um, one of these blocks. You have two pixels, yeah. And yeah, you would think that's it, but there's more because there's something that can make this much, much more consistent. Has personally helped me a lot. Or two things. One is uh, the way that I tap right. I found that I'm much more consistent if I like smack it, like tap it really hard, really hard and fast. Um, and yeah, I'll just leave it there. Take this information as you will, because you know there's the the there's the integrity of your keyboard. But yeah, uh, and the second one. Now this one uh, will leave your keyboard intact, fortunately. I found out that you can actually buffer a movement to the right or, or to the left. Uh, in this case, uh, we're interested in a movement buffer to the right. So, so you can press right during a time that you're supposed to not be able to move to the right. But I am close enough to exit on it uh, that I'm still hugging the wall, but I'm really close to leave in the block let's say something like uh let's see if i can find a good example there we go saw that okay let, let's see if i can zoom in the input display let's slow motion and everything okay as you can see the moment i'm pressing right the wall is there however the exact moment the wall isn't there anymore to block me Tolka moves exactly one pixel to the right which is perfect so yeah, you can take advantage of this. You can learn the timing that works. And just press right when you're about to exit the block. And you know, that combining with uh, having a good right press, uh, you know, it makes it so you almost never miss this actually. So yeah, that's pretty useful. That's pretty, pretty useful. So yeah, you can even uh, hold right and then leave it. So yeah, that's another way that you can do it, I guess. Okay, and also there's one more thing. I've seen some people do it this way as well. Something like this. So yeah, this setup is kind of based on timing. And I feel like it's much less consistent. But yeah, if it works for you, I'll just, uh, just wanted to mention it. Just in case that works for you. So yeah, with that, that's pretty much it with this level. Okay, let's go to the next one. There we go, level 16. So yeah, this is one of my favorite levels. Normally you go like this, but the, there are much faster ways to do this. You can do a single spike jump or you can do a triple spike jump, which uh, I'll cover here, but to be honest, uh, it should be covered in advance instead. But yeah, I will cover here since uh, you might have seen me do it, because I always do it in runs. Yeah, most of my records have it. But yeah, I'll let you know that it's pretty much not worth going for because it only saves 0.2 seconds. And it is uh, really, really hard. And yeah, uh, the only reason why I do it is because I'm dumb. And yeah, I became good with it, so I just uh, kept doing it. And also, I mean, it's cool, so <laughs> yeah. Just don't be dumb like me and uh, just pick up on all the strats. There are many other strats that save around that time and are easier. So, yeah. With that being said, let's just. I'll just go explain the single spike jump first. So, basically, what you do is uh, land over there properly. It's a two pixels window as always. You just land here and yeah, you don't have to do this uh, which, uh, way here, which. You know, loses a lot of time. And yeah, doing that alone saves one second, I believe. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it saves one second. This is very much worth going for, I must say. And uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, there's no real secret to it other than practicing, I believe. Uh, the way I like to do is uh, hugging the wall. Just going straight forward and hugging the wall here which uh, sort of stops me and makes me do it in a consistent way because like if I'm going forward too much then the wall 
will just stop me and make it consistent across all the times that I try it like being in the same position at the same time but yeah other than that I don't think there's much more than you can do so yeah, doing that all you have to do is just get accustomed to it and learn the timing pretty much and yeah and of course once you get the key like this you just uh, go back and complete the level normally so yeah that's pretty much it okay so that was fast yeah there was not much to it okay now this has more to explain I think now triple spike jump so first off this is what it looks like there we go and uh, yeah the ball shouldn't be there again whatever so yeah to do this first off the first jump is the most important thing Everything else, too much to ask for, for a human to do more. Uh, so yeah, pretty much all you have to care about is the first jump and then pray nothing goes wrong because there is some chance that things go wrong along the way. Namely landing, oh my god, you see? Namely landing here correctly. That's much more out of your control, I, I would say. Yeah, to do the first jump, you have to, you have to first press right and then press jump in quick succession. You have to learn the timing for it, but yeah, it's uh, pretty quick. And uh, I would say it's important to do it in order, like press right and press jump. But it's uh, pretty quick, so it's it's close to simultaneous, but it isn't. I, I think it's the way that I could describe it. So yeah, you can sort of see how I'm doing it in my input display. So you just learn the timing. Okay, so once you get the first jump, all you have to do is jump and jump. And then here, at the last block, you need to stop before you jump again. Because otherwise, you'll just fall like that. For all the jumps except the last one, you just keep going forward. And at the last block, you need to stop briefly before you jump again. And yeah, as I said, aside from that first jump, it's kind of unreasonable uh, to ask for more. Those things uh, out of uh, your control on the last block that I was mentioning, yeah, you can... The thing is, you have to learn the timing for when to stop. But the thing is, uh, there's two pixels that you can land with the spikes, right? So you can get either of those two, and I think that misses with the timing a bit. So that's why it's... Uh, kind of inconsistent and I personally don't worry too much about it I just do as always and if I die I just die it's kind of a low chance I think that it messes you up so you can just get away with uh, without worrying about it but if you want to worry about it I think you can get a visual cue while you're jumping if you land on the first pixel or on the second one over here you can look at the feet and if they're uh, separated from the block like kind of almost floating then you know you land on the second one so you can learn that timing and then if uh, they're closer to the block like that I guess yep as you can see then you can know that has a different timing but yeah in summary if you get the first pixel it should be a bit of it. like you stopping later and if you get the second one you stop in earlier right I think that's how it should work. Yeah, that's all I know about this lol. So yeah, I hope that's uh, useful. So, yeah, that's lol 16. So let's go to next one. Okay, lol 17. Okay, so I'll briefly cover this one. This one has uh, nothing to it. Uh, it's uh, just the same route, this one. Uh, all I just wanted to mention is that you can optimize this a little if you grab the key like this. Like, not, sta not standing block, you can barely touch it uh, while on the air. Yeah, if you do it correctly, you should save about, um, I think it's uh, 0.15. And yeah, also you can optimize this a little bit, going to the right already, while, while you're uh, falling here. But still making sure not to fall. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to briefly mention those two. Because uh, these may seem like dumb details, but if you add them up, you can save up to like 0.3 seconds, I believe. So, yeah, just at the cost of some more effort. I mean, this is kind of scary if you don't get it. 
Uh, so, so yeah, you, you need to take that into account as well. I would say make sure to at least uh, just go to right here. Take this one at your own risk because uh, it's still scary. You can miss it like this and that loses a lot of time. But yeah, there's nothing more to this level. Okay, so level 18. Okay, this is kind of an interesting one. Okay, so first off, okay, so first off, as always, I'll show, uh, you know, the normal route. Okay, so this is the, the way you complete the level. Okay, so let me introduce you to RNG. Okay. Um, yeah, I know this game has RNG. I I have no idea how that's possible, but yeah, you cannot get away. <laughs> but yeah, you cannot run away from it. It's apparently there's no speed run uh, without RNG. So kind of like the yin and yang or something. So yeah, let me let me explain. So you see this string. You see I can jump. You see I didn't touch the block right there. Let me see what happens if I try more times. There you go. You see I touched the block there. Well, uh, I didn't do anything different, right? So yeah, that's the RNG. Uh, apparently, you can get different heights. At the very least, to different heights. Uh, that's pretty much what we're concerned about. So yeah, the first one, as you can see, I skipped the block. I don't land on it. But I can't land on it if this game does not make a fool of me, please. There you go. You see? So yeah, it's pretty weird. I have no idea why it happens, but yeah, as far as I know, um, I'm not doing anything different, so I'm just assuming this is RNG. Okay, so yeah, if you're lucky and do, do skip the block here, you should be able to save around 0.2. Yeah, there is a time save that relies on RNG, so yeah, <laughs> just uh, deal with it. Don't worry, there's uh, more RNG and it's uh, even worse because it can make you lose the entire run. Yeah, this is absolutely nothing compared to that. So yeah, so yeah, I'll take this uh, point to second loss all day. Cause uh, yeah, it gets worse. Uh, so yeah, don't worry about that. It does get worse. So yeah, enough with this RNG thing. Yeah, as in the last level, you can optimize this by not landing on the block when you get that key like that yeah, that's a bit risky so, like if you don't get it you lose um, pretty much the run if you do something like this yep if you want to play safe and just take it like this i completely understand it however the next thing has no risk it is easy very easy i would say and it saves 0.2 seconds as you know if i go here and take the key normally I have to wait for a door here. So for there to be any way to save time, what we have to do is uh, actually grab the key earlier. And there's a way, and it's uh, actually pretty simple. And this whole time, just hidden in plain sight. Shout out to Necrafting who let me know of this. So yeah, you can just do a chaotic jump like that. And yeah. Uh, a normal jump, you just have to wait until you fall to get the key. But if you do a coyote jump, you just get it while jumping or while going up. So yeah, that saves a ton of time for free, pretty much. And that's the thing. No effort, no risk, and saves, uh, I think it's 0.2 seconds. So yeah, go for it. Don't disappoint me and just always go for it. That's pretty much all about this low. Okay, low 20. This one's kind of interesting as well. Okay, so... Again, in beginner, I did this, uh, getting that key, of course. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to teach you, and I think it should be the standard way to do this. Again, you fall here, you go through a string, but here you land on the block. So yeah, the reason for that is it cuts a lot of air time, and that saves actually a lot of time. I don't know how much. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, it's, it saves half a second. So yeah, you want to make sure to land on this block before falling again. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So things to take into account because I used to be very bad at this. <laughs> so the issues I had with this is I tried to go too far to the right because I was afraid of not getting the key in the middle. It turned out it was uh, more of a hindrance than anything else because if you focus on being close to the right like this, it's very easy to miss the left key. If I were to do it, yeah, that would happen to me all the time, missing the left key. So yeah, what you want to make sure to do is just land on the middle. 
I think this is a much easier timing and it's actually not rough at all to get the right key. And yeah, besides that, I don't think there's uh, anything else to worry about pretty much. This is a pretty easy level, I would say. I mean, it's rough because it's uh, pretty late in the game, but other than that, it's not really a difficult level. There's one more thing. If you happen to miss landing on a block like this, there's still a backup that you can do, which is landing here, landing on the spikes here. And so that way you do not lose time. You do not lose that half second. You get to the door in time. And in fact, if you do it like that, you actually save time. You actually save 0.1 seconds. However, I just uh, recommend you do it the standard way and just use that as a backup if things go wrong because it's pretty hard to do and compared to the other way and it only saves 0.1 second so yeah there's a lot of things that can go wrong you can pretty much land everywhere you can land here as well but what you, you should be looking for is going to the left at a timing that you uh, end up hugging the wall so you can just tap left and then land in the corner because of that that's the um, most reliable way I've found to do this. Okay, in any case, let's go to the next level. Okay, so level 21. Huge level right here. Here we have the toughest level of this game. Or maybe that's some of the thing of the past. Because I have just had a huge finding on this level. A huge one. That hopefully it'd be really good news. I'll be able to bring people to try and play this game entirely just because of this because this level is like the biggest gate there is to the speedrun of this game because it is such a hard level and if you miss it it kills you around completely you know you you have to be willing to put up with so much uh, frustration and and you know uh, generally people do not like uh, pain so, so yeah, that's why. <laughs> so yeah, just so you understand the difficulty of this. Wait, I should go to web version, otherwise it will be hard to show you, okay? Okay, so here I am. So I went to the web version because there's some kind of bug in the PC version. If I hold forward here, I die to the ball, even though I shouldn't. Uh, so yeah. If you're doing a speedrun in PC, you don't have to worry because that does not happen in the speedrun. It just happens when you reset a level like this in normal mode. Oh yeah, first. Uh, okay, this is how you normally do it, I guess. Okay, so the way this was done up to now, or well, or the way I did it up to now, because I guess nobody else has pulled this off in a run. So yeah, basically what I do is I jump here, I get to the string. And I get some uh, random position on the string because I'm human, so I get different some different results. So yeah, based on that, I try to adapt. Yeah, there's different timings depending on where you land on the string. But basically, generally, you have to just uh, briefly go to the left and to the right. And if you do it correctly, uh, by doing correctly, I mean uh, pray and maybe you get it is you should be able to get the key been some time I haven't done this also there you go so as you see I got the key and then I made a spike jump at the same time which is pretty sick so yeah it's pretty insane right uh, so yeah the problem with this is uh, it's it's wildly inconsistent. It's really inconsistent. I think the clear rate might be something like 20%, something like 10%. I have no idea. So I forgot. Getting the key isn't actually guaranteed. Remember when I told you about Angie that you could get like two important different heights whenever you jump on a string? Well. That affects whether or not you get this key. So, if I were to do this, I get I got the key there. I have no idea what the chance is, but maybe it works uh, like this. Yeah, there you go. You see, I didn't get the key. Weird, maybe I have to make a long jump first. In any case, you see there I got the key. Here I didn't. So yeah, that's... Uh, 
I have no idea why that happens, so as far as I know it's random. Just getting the jump is what I took into account as clear rate, like uh, just getting the jump and getting through and doing it right, I count that as a win. So inside those wins, maybe you can get rid of half of them because of RNG and you do need right but not getting the key. Uh, yeah, I've practiced this uh, for a long, long time, so it's so insane. Also considering this is pretty much the last series level, and you have to get so many things right before you even get a chance at this. This is the reason why this is like the biggest gate to people getting into this game, I guess. But what I found is so much easier, and you do not lose any time whatsoever. So yeah, if, if you want to get a good time in, in this game, with this now you'll have uh, absolutely no excuse. Pay close attention. So instead of doing this uh, complicated shenanigans that are, uh, well, first try. Um, instead, actually this, this is something, by the way, this is something that I found out a long time ago. But I'm going to explain you why I thought it didn't work. Anyhow, first off, I'll, I'll show you how it's done. So you start off the same, right? You go to the string and go get the key. However, all you have to do is just get it and stand on this block. And then instead of doing a spike jump on this part of the block, we do it on the other part of the block. So you do it on the other one. So it looks like this, like that. Okay. So again, I found this a long time ago, so why did I just uh, not think it worked? Well, so you see this is normal mode, and normally where you test things, because you can reset and stuff, and low select. Uh, the problem with that is apparently, I have no idea why, but apparently here the door just spawns faster than if you're in speedrun mode. What that means is here you lose time because the door just spawns uh, quicker. So, so yeah, because of that, I thought I lost time and, and you know, I just kept the other strat and forgot about it. So somehow I figured out it's different in speedrun. Apparently in speedrun, the door spawns later, which means there's actually no difference between strats. Uh, yeah, because even though you could do the faster one, you'd wait at the door, right? So yeah, this is a strat that you can just, uh, I'd say you can pretty much get it every time if you're good enough. You still depend on luck with the key, but it's just so much better, it's so much easier, and it doesn't lose any time, like there's no drawbacks, really. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean with the door. Okay, I guess uh, we have to do a quick, a quick speed run here. Okay, so here I am. Uh, yeah, I know I'm here at two minutes. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little rusty, I guess, whatever. <laughs> Don't mind the ball, of course it's wandering around, but yeah, I can still show you. Like, be something like this. You see how the door just, how the door opens just so much later. It's so random, I... <laughs> so yeah, for any further tips or anything, I don't think there's much more. Just, just know that you can, the amount that you have to go to the left isn't much. So you don't have to worry about it. If you don't get the key, it will be because of the string RNG rather than you not being close to it. As long as you're like able to land on the block, you should also be able to get the key. Like there's no way you cannot get the key if you can land on the block. So you, you actually don't have to worry about getting the key at all if you want to see it like that. Just have to land on the block uh, yeah if you don't get the key well the, you know that's life that's uh it can happen just try again you know and uh, yeah there's there isn't much more to it that's it so yeah i hope this helped you i hope this is uh encouraging i guess yeah with this the current time my current record is uh definitely much more reasonable to beat for sure so yeah just leaving it there so yeah, that's uh, pretty much everything. I mean, next is the advanced section. So yeah, see you there. Okay, so let's begin. This uh, should be the advanced section. So first off, let me explain some things first. Okay, so most of the things that we're going to see are going to be either 
uh, night jumps or string consoles or, com or a combination of both. So yeah, string jump I should have already explained but in case uh, you skip that, let me quickly go at it again. Yeah, basically you need to jump at a specific timing right when you're crossing the string and if you do it correctly then you jump a bit less like that and so you touch the ground earlier so yeah for more detailed explanation I explain it at the start of uh, the main section I'll I'll leave a timestamp over here but yeah let's explain night jumps then so a night jump is this yeah, so as you can see that was uh, a bit weird yeah it looks a bit weird so basically what I'm doing is you can see we need a gap between and the block need to be in this uh, sort of a L setup or night jump setup like the chest night move setup yeah all you have to do is you need to fall it's important to fall uh, it doesn't work with the normal jump there as you can see that's a normal jump it needs to be a coyote jump yeah again coyote jump breaking the game of course and yeah once you do a coyote jump uh, if you jump again you can buffer the jump you should be able to jump even before you reach the ground you sort of jump from the wall as you can see from the side yeah that's basically it so yeah if you do this well uh, you should save some time because you know you're doing two jumps at once sort of you did you don't need to wait to fall to the block you, yeah you jump earlier basically if you manage to not waste time on this part where you need to fall yeah it's pretty easy to do the hard part is uh, just getting to the edge of the block to do a chaotic jump because uh, otherwise uh, it doesn't work okay let's get to the first level then um, yeah there you go low late so yeah normally you do like all you could do is just optimize um, this jump and make it as tight as you can to go further beyond that what you can do is a night jump instead because you see these two blocks they allow you to so yeah you do the same but you do a night jump sort of like that however you need to be careful and this is kind of tight because as I said uh, you can't waste time if you're far from the block and you need to get to the uh, edge because you need to fall for it to work uh, you cannot just jump from here so yeah because of that it's kind of tight and that's what makes this harder but yeah if you're able to quickly get to the edge and then jump immediately you should save a bit of time how much my test I kind of get different readings so I'm, I'm not sure but I think it can save up to 0.16 honestly it's not much it doesn't seem very worthwhile so yeah uh, that's gonna be a constant throughout all these levels in advanced so yeah that's basically it on this level so let's go to the next one okay next one we are going to jump all the way to level 15 so okay so level 15 okay so <laughs> yeah this one gets very wild because you can do a string jump here that makes you be able to jump earlier so you save time the problem with that is it completely ruins everything that I explained buffering a movement to the right and all that because you just almost don't even have time to hug the wall yeah this time there is there is not a consistent setup I guess you pretty much have to YOLO it like just go at it and like that you know just get it yeah, I don't know what else to say the, the way I do this like instead of uh, hugging the wall I prefer to just uh, be in the middle of this string and then move to the right the right amount so yeah it becomes much much harder because the lack of a setup but yeah it should save uh, around 0.16 is what I measured again I, with these two it's hard to with this the string console and night jump uh, I'm finding it hard to measure how much time it saves and yeah the second thing that you can do here is you can do a night jump uh, once you're here and so that's actually one of the easiest night jumps so honestly I think this could actually be implemented into a run easily I think it's the best trap in this whole section because of the fact that when you do this you are already at the edge of the block 
there is no precision in that sense required at all, because you are already at the perfect position. And uh, then the night jump itself is pretty easy. You just have to fall and, ju and like jump twice. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, if you want to implement anything of this event section, I would say this is your best bet. And now, as you might have guessed, you can do both at the same time. Now, doing both at the same time, like that, I think it kind of skyrockets the, the difficulty because it's uh, too many things to pay attention to now. So yeah, that's it. Let's go to the next level. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, if you remember triple spike jump here, right at this position, you can do a night jump like that. Get the key, then go to the left like that, and you should be able to complete the level. Now, this is completely insane. Um, it's hard to think of anything harder than this. Doing the triple spike jump thing is already hard enough. You also need to pay attention to once you stop here, start moving forward again the moment you land and time a jump so that you jump well while you're falling. And then uh, as you just saw there's different things that you can go wrong in HC. Incredibly precise timing that you need to do to both get the key and then go to the left without dying to the spikes as you just saw. I just reproduced both the scenarios very conveniently. So yeah, it looks pretty cool though. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's that's prob that's probably the only benefit this has. Cause yeah, the time it saves, uh, it should be the same as any night jump. Any night jumps should save uh, the same amount of time roughly. So yeah, it should be around, it's around 0.13, I'm not sure why it's a bit lower, but yeah. What's important to know, it's a very negligible time save for how incredibly hot it is. So just one more thing, because you have to, when you land here, you have to quickly stop, then run forward again. I found that, you know, uh, if you press both left and right, you stop. So that's another way that you can do it if you're more comfortable with that. Holding forward but tap left at the precise timing. I'm always too late or too soon. I don't know. Oh, there you go. Right there you saw it. That's uh, another way that you can do this. Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, you do not need to do the triple spike jump to do this. Of course, because uh, single spike jump you can also do the night jump. Okay, So you land here and then do it like that. So I don't know, maybe this could serve as some of a backup if you don't get the triple spike jump. Like if you need to get that for whatever reason. Like if you miss the triple spike jump. This uh, should almost make up for it. It should be a bit slower. With that now, that's pretty much it. Okay, and so next level. Okay, so we're here. I arrived the... Uh, Pretty late, but whatever. <laughs> These tracks here, they might not be very difficult, I guess, per se. But yeah, this is the last level, and if you have a good pace, uh, it's easy to get nervous. So, dealing with any of this stuff is honestly pretty unnecessary. I would just prefer to just get to the finish. But yeah, in any case. Okay, so the first thing that you can do, you can do a string console here. You saved uh, around 0.2 seconds, I would say. The second thing is you can do a night jump here. So you can see and we get all the way up to the second block over here. This night jump is uh, especially easy. You do not have to focus on getting to the edge properly or do anything uh, precise to do that. Because all you have to do is uh, fully go to the left. You get exactly to the edge uh, as soon as you land. You get like the perfect position. So yeah, all you have to really worry about is timing the coyote jump. The night jumps that you can do, I mean, I mean, if we list them out, there's the level 8 night jump, that's probably the hardest. There's the level 15 and then there's this one. And they're probably both equally easy. And that's it, uh, we get to the finish. And yeah, of course, uh, there's always the risk that you jump here by accident and lose your run and risk of you missing it and of course uh, losing the run 
these come with the the risk and do not save much time they should both uh, save yeah they should both save uh, a bit less uh, than 20 seconds but yeah can still prove to be useful for anyone out there that's confident enough to pull this off with this i believe that i have covered pretty much everything i know about this game so yeah so yeah, as always, I hope this was useful. With this, the only thing that's left to see world record analysis. So let's go at it. Let's just jump right into it. Okay, so this is world record analysis. Uh, so I'm gonna go over my run. So the first thing I'll do is I'll point out the mistakes. Or maybe not so the mistakes. Also, the places where I didn't go for strats that save time. So let's quickly go over that. So first off, because I've already watched over this. So as you can see here at level 4, in this corner jump. I didn't jump as soon as I could. So I wasted time going up over here. That's uh, not really a mistake. It's kind of intentional because it makes it safer. But uh, yeah, I did lose time here, so... Okay, so next uh, would be level 7 because of the routing. If you do the spike jump here, you save 0.2 seconds. Uh, I won't comment anything about this. Uh, I'll just go over the main uh, strategies of the... I mean, the strategies of the main section. Uh, I won't care about advanced when watching this right now. Okay, here I I believe I tempted. Yeah, as you can see, I pressed jump here. I, I I attempted a string console but didn't get it. So that's another point too. And I believe next thing we should watch, yeah, this low 14. So here, let's see how well did I play this this one. Yeah, so as you can see, I went kind of far to the left. But then I pivoted right here, a bit. So let's see how much time I wasted having to walk to the corner of the block. So we have one, two, three frames, uh, three, something like three frames, I guess. Two or three frames. So that should roughly be close to 0.1 seconds. So it's not much, but in theory, you can do this better if you do it perfectly. You should be able to save a bit of time. And what else? Uh, this level, there should be nothing. This level, there should be nothing. This level, uh, so yeah, this as I already explained the uh, triple spike jump. It saves 0.2 seconds, but it's much harder. So we'll see how that affects uh, the routing to be my time. Okay, so level 17. I was not 100% precise, as you can see I landed on the ground, which uh, doesn't matter because uh, I don't care about how fast I fall here, or anything like that. But however it serves as a guideline, because if I don't uh, land on the ground, that means I'm, you know, farther to the left, which means I could have turned earlier. and. I could have probably I could have probably saved one or two frames here. And here let's see. I landed here. So I did land on the exact corner of the block, so I lost uh, some time again. Due to not playing completely clean. It it looks like it took me one frame of walking to fall off the block. So even though it's not perfect, it's pretty good. Uh, I probably lost uh, 0.1 seconds or a bit less in this level. So it's not bad in my opinion. Okay, anyhow, level 18. Okay, so this, this one is a big one. This one uh, is the level that you can save the most time right now, I think. Because first off, here. I land on the ground. Now, I explained this already. This is RNG. So, yeah, because of that, I fall slower, so I lose 0.2 seconds. So, you can save 0.2 seconds there uh, with better luck. This I do pretty much perfect. And uh, 
this I didn't know that you could do a chaotic jump to grab the key earlier, so I lose another 0.2 seconds here. So just with that, it's 0.4 seconds that you can save in one level over the world record, which uh, in my opinion is pretty insane. A good place for improvement for sure. Okay. Okay, this level has nothing. This level has nothing really. I let's see. Actually, out of curiosity, how clean was this right here? So I land here. I land one frame after I'm already walking. And one frame after I'm falling. Okay, so this is pretty good actually. Um not bad. So yeah. Okay, level 21. As I said this uh if you haven't watched this already, go watch the level 21 explanation. Because this has a huge discovery. And, you know, any possible time saves that you can make prior to this are much more reliable because uh, you're much more likely to get through this level with the new strat that I discovered. So, there's no time to save here. However, there's a better way to do this because it's much, much more consistent. Okay, so, by the way, did I almost... Yeah, I almost died. <laughs> I almost ran to the right... Because I'm holding right and fell to my death and lost my run completely. I almost did that. Okay, thank god the door appeared just before I died. Oh my god. Okay, whatever. Um, okay, so last level. I don't think there's much here either. Uh, maybe I missed some jump. Maybe I didn't buffer some jump. Let's see. This one I would say I buffered. These ones are close. I almost uh, lost time. This one I lost maybe one frame. Th this animation shouldn't appear, I believe. And now this turn. Okay, and now this turn, let's see how clean it is. I land pretty much on the edge of the block. Is that? I think that I think that's the absolute edge of the block. I don't think there's another pixel to the right. Maybe there is, but oh my god, that's scary. But yeah, that's perfect, so pretty nice to see, I guess. Oh yeah, that's the end of the run. Okay. So 148, 490. So with all of this, the, the route to follow to beat this time, if we ignore all the... everything that has to do with uh, execution, like playing clean and all that that I just uh, watched over, uh, just from the perspective of strategies, Let's go back and count the time that we save. So first off, okay, so level seven, we save 0.2 seconds. Level nine, if we get this string cancel, we get another 0.2 seconds. Okay, so level 16, we can actually remove 0.2 seconds to our total, just because let's say we want to do a single spike jump because it's much easier. Okay, level 18, we get 0.2 seconds if we are lucky and we get 0.2 seconds again we do the key jump to grab the key that's down below. So again, that's 0.4 seconds. This hypothetical route does not really have that many more strategies. So we have level seven spike jump, level nine string cancel, and level 18 being lucky, a level 18 key jump to get the key that's down below. And doing the single spike jump instead of triple spike jump, which uh, is lower. In total, it'd be 0 0.2 second time save. And what do we have right here? My time is a 148.5, pretty much. That means you can get a sub 148. You can get a 147. So, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much where I was uh, headed. This is what I wanted to get at. Uh, you can get a 147. Uh, you know, I'll just leave it there. Uh, go for it. Go for it. See if someone can get it, because... Uh, you know, I'm gonna be out for a long time again, I guess. So, here's your chance. That's all. Okay, so this is gonna be the complete end of this tutorial. So, thank you everyone for watching. I This is a long video, so I doubt you watched it all. But in any case, thanks for watching. And yeah, as always, I hope this is helpful. I hope this is encouraging. And... 
yeah, hopefully this game will have just a bit more of attention because, uh, you know, I think it deserves it. I, I really like the game. really enjoyed playing this, uh, despite the pain. And so, yeah, see you next time.